Hello and welcome to a new uh, game that I'll be showcasing on my channel. Um, it's uh, I've not really played many sim type games before. No farming simulator and trucking simulator. But this one caught my eye and the reason it caught my eye is that um, <clears throat> one of the DLCs that's on the game uh, is of an area um, I know very well because I, I live in the area so uh, <clears throat> uh, so I know all of the stations and, and, the, and the line and everything so um, I came into the game I bought the game um, I you know I'll just show you what we got here so this is Brighton Station so, for those of you who know Brighton Station, this is actually a pretty good representation of Brighton Station. Um, that's a, where my little cursor is there. That's a coffee booth. Uh, I think AMT Coffee. And that's, uh, there's a Marks and Spencers in the corner here. There's a takeaway food place here. And the ticket office is in the corner there. These are coffee shops. This booth here is for people who haven't bought tickets that's the guards booth at the end there and um, it's pretty faithfully represented um, as I said I'm not normally uh, you know big into these games but um, this is actually uh, you know this is this is pretty much as the game you know the game has pretty much nailed the um, nailed the look of Brighton Station um, through that door there you'd be able to see the main road but it's sort of bricked up and so I can understand there's limitations there'd be traffic and stuff outside that door there but um yes and the faithful repro uh, the faithful representation continues on the tracks as well I've, I've had a couple of goes on um, I've had a couple of goes on driving and um, just to show you the area in the world where this is I will um, just bring up on the screen now so this is the route um, that this DLC gives it's called the East Coast or East Way or something like that and it's basically Brighton to Eastbourne there's a there's a small a couple of small spurs there's a spur that runs from Lewis down to New Haven so that grey line, I don't know if you can see it but that runs down to New Haven Harbour and you can get ferries to France from there, then the other um, line goes up to uh, ha uh, Hastings and Orr so Orr is just the other side of Hastings uh, it's up here somewhere it's like a terminus really um, for the line but um, yeah and this um, the, the the line this DLC is basically centered on this line delivery of the trains and everything which is quite interesting just to give you another example of how it's re, um, how it's uh, represented Brighton station this is Brighton station this is what it really looks like and they've even recreated the, the wooden floor uh, some of the platforms are wood uh, because it's built on a hill so they didn't flatten the hill off they built solidly on which areas they could and the areas rather than flatten the hill they put the type of scaffolding under the ground and put um, floorboards very thick durable floorboards like from a pier or something and that's exactly what's happened here and they've they've reproduced that in the game which is quite uh, quite amazing really I think that the, the attention to detail there are some faults in the game. <coughs> uh, I don't know where I'm supposed to be going here. Head down to the platform. doesn't say which platform. See that? So I'm not an expert by any means. Uh, absolutely by any means. I'm going to go all the way up here, aren't I? And then find out it's a different train. It's this train here. Yeah. So this um, this is called... This, this level I'm doing now is called the Enthusiast's Excursion. I don't know what that means. Um, I've got a lot of assists helping me uh, in on this 
playthrough. I, uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, so I'm not uh, an, an expert on this by any means. I am still learning. Um, I had a quick look at, there's a London Underground part. Oh, there I'm supposed to go. See that, see that bluish turquoise color up ahead? That's my spot. When I get into that spot, that's where I'm, that's where I'm due. There are already people on the train. Note that because when I get into the carriage, I'm expected to open the doors to let people on. <laughs> but there are already people on the train. So it, it does a few odd things. Um, I've also noticed that there isn't too much difference in the different characters. Climb aboard. So I open the door up. Stand next to the seats. I get into the seats. I close the door. Open the window. Let the bit of draft in there's the master key so it's a case of holding down the mouse button and just drawing that we're going to be going forward <laughs> oh uh, forward and prepare so it says I've got to wait to leave so when that turns green on the right hand side we are ready to go, so I didn't have to let these people in at all. Someone else did it for me. Unlock the doors. Door release for this side. Tells me there that the doors are open. I'll just go to third party view so I can see. So look, everyone's getting off. Now this is the terminus. That means they've been sitting on that train since the driver brought them in. And, and the last driver didn't bother letting them off, <laughs> letting them off the train. Which is a bit weird. So there's me. Or my character. See, sitting there. Happy as Larry. So now, lock the doors. Which is this button here. It will tell me on the screen here when all the doors are shut. There we go. Apply power, get moving. Right, so this is the bit. So. So, I'm on neutral. And now I'm just pulling away. So, next stop is Lewis, seven miles away. So there's quite a lot of, um, in the bottom right hand corner I've got a dial there. The little red circle is my speed limit. It's just a, an aid to help me with my speed limit. Hardcore players would be using the speedometer in the middle. There. So, um, uh, top right hand corner tells me when the next signal is obviously green is go uh, an, an angle kind of orange is not uh, is to sort of beware so I'm just going to coast now there's a gradient on the right that shows me I'm just going to show you outside the train now so this is actually this is actually what just if I do this this is at pretty much what um, it looks like here. This view, and if you look here, if I go back here, there's actually uh, an aqueduct here that we're travelling across. Oh, sorry, not aqueduct, that's water. Viaduct. So... I can pretty much control the train now so we're going uphill so I need to just put a bit of a spurt on. I can do that from the carriage which is good. But yeah, I mean look, just over that horizon there is the sea. Um, this area here is sort of technically called London Road, that's Preston Park. Can zoom in. Oh, I've just sped up too much. By accident. I pressed one because I wasn't going to hit a wall. So I just need to speed up now. Uh, I've just been given permission to go 70. So it tells me in 0 0.71 miles in the top right hand corner, it tells me in, seven, in 0 0.61 miles the speed limit will be raised to 70 miles an hour. Just a little bit beyond that is another signal I need to be aware of in case that signal changes. In the bottom right, just to the right of my uh, speedometer there, is a gradient and it tells me 
power, what I'd need for the power, uh, if I need to adjust my power, because I'm going uphill. I'm going uphill, and so you 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 lose some energy. Um, this button here on the wall is the emergency brake. It's right in front of me. There's my green signal, which is telling me. Uh, there's the sign just beyond it of where I'm supposed to stop when I see the green signal. I'm starting to lose speed now because I'm on a slight gradient. But I just give it a little bit of juice. Now, I'm not an expert. I must, you know, I'm sure there are people watching this going, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this, doing that wrong. Um... I, I'm friends on Facebook with somebody who actually drives on this line. Um, the company, if you're from abroad, the company that operates this line is infamous in the area for uh, issues regarding um, getting rid of guards on the trains. These, all these trains in this area are renowned, are renowned actually, since I was a little boy. I didn't live in the area. I lived in London when I was young. And in this area, oh look, there's no train coming. I've got a horn here, I think. There you go. See that? What little boy doesn't want to do that? <laughs> so, so um, they're renowned really for um, the. I'm just going to coast. So I'm just going to stand outside and. Follow the train along a bit. Look at that. It's very nice, isn't it? Just got to be mindful. I've got five miles. Right. So, yeah, the um, the whole um, area is renowned. I'm just going to be breaking the limit here. Just need to bring it down. So, the um, that's Brighton and Hove. Albion Football Club there, we're just about to sort of pass it, just going to give it a bit of energy, yeah, um, there's been industrial action on this line and the main line from Brighton into London, the reason there's been this industrial action is because the train company want to get rid of train guards, that's odd, see the way I did that as I go over that, what's going to do with this, so yeah, that's the American Express Brighton and Hove Albion Football Club, so interesting go in the tunnel otherwise it's going to make me headbutt it so the um and this train doesn't have a guard i have to do everything i don't have any way i'm supposed to open up my door if i was a real train driver i'm supposed to open up the door of my train and stand on the platform to see everything is safe there's a couple of scenarios that i've come across where one of the doors is jammed and I can't leave the train I have to shut the train down safely and then walk along the platform bearing in mind that I've got the key to the train in my pocket <laughs> walk along the platform through hundreds of people so I'm going downhill now so I just need to so now I've got the opposite problem oh hello Hey, so, so, bearing in mind that I'm, uh, you know, the only person on the train, I have, uh, only person representing the company on the train, I have to walk down the uh, 12 car train, it was the last carriage, and fix the, um, fix the door, and then walk back to my carriage through, there was hundreds of people. I couldn't do it in the end. In the end, I had to walk through the train, which was pretty busy as well. And then it made me realise, God, you know, they really do need guards. It's ridiculous that they don't have guards. Um, so, as far as I know, there are ticket collectors on some of the trains um, uh, that go around. And I, I'm not sure if their duties have been extended to be safety related in any way. But um, it's been very, very acrimonious. There were several strikes on the line uh, down here. And I, for one, supported them. I, I stopped commuting. I used to, my wife certainly, used to commute into London from Brighton Station. And it was, 
on some days it was a nightmare and I mean obviously there's nothing she could do about it but the, the company was not you know the pe people that she was working for were not very sympathetic about industrial action so you know as far as they're concerned you've had since you left yesterday to get there on time today <laughs> so why not why oh look at the speed is now dropping slightly in a couple of hundred oh just need to drop that off 55 there we go so new speed limit approaching just going to break slightly down to 52 so that I don't get caught out because we're going downhill Ooh, another train yay <laughs> anyway yeah this isn't a you know this is quite a nice uh, everything I've seen so far has faithfully represented um, come on down to 10 miles an hour in a minute so I'm just putting the brakes on. We're going downhill, so I need to be a bit careful. Just want to bring it down. It's not long until we reach this 10 mile an hour limit. Uh, so I have to sort of concentrate a bit there I broke I broke a bit too soon really and now I'm too far away from the uh, 10 mile an hour I want to break a bit more when I get within about 200 yards this train can handle a, a certain amount of braking but I have failed levels before where um, I broke too soon just to stop at uh, just to stop in time at uh, a station and it said to me derailed mission failed so uh, you can really balls it up <laughs> so God it's taking forever you don't realize how fast the damn thing is uh, this is the 10 mile an hour limit here this this marker here. See where the red marker is? So this is the station. The reason it is ten miles an hour is because it's a there's a junction here where all of the platforms lead into this one tunnel. And there's only two lines through the tunnel, but there's think there's like four platforms. So there's the, they have to really uh really sort of i have to stop my own carriage on that that line but yeah they have to really kind of control quite stringently the uh the need over the urgency of getting through so just cruise up to it a little bit just a bit more Nice and slowly done. So we're here. Uh, so now I've got to go to Eastbourne. So we've stopped here, and now I've just got to get myself going into Eastbourne. I didn't even have to open the gates up, it was just an enthusiast's ride. Uh, I've got, tells in the top left hand corner, it's 14 miles and I have about 16 minutes to get there. So this bit's 10 miles an hour. It's warning me in 90 yards I can double my speed to 20 miles an hour. So down that line is the way to London, it's another branch line to London. Have I got my window open? That's all right. I've got windscreen wipers and everything actually. Which is quite uh, quite cool. So this is the 40 mile an hour warning zone. Three, two, one. I'm now should switch over in a second to 20 miles an hour. Uh, where are you? 20 miles an hour. 
Oh yeah, I have to, the whole train has to pass through the point before the speed limit goes up. So I'm actually still on 20 miles an hour until I pass, so the whole train passes through the point. So although there's another speed increase in 500 yards, if my whole train hasn't passed, if I've got a particularly long train and it hasn't passed the point behind, then I'm not allowed to uh, increase the speed beyond what it was recommended. So now my whole train's through. So I can now raise to 40, I think. So I'm just gonna do that now. As soon as I'm through these points, uh, these junctions, I will go to an external view again. And it's a very pretty part of the world. Uh, there's a castle in Lewis and um which is worth a visit also um one of henry the ape's wives one of the ones who survived him uh, the only reason being that her brother or uncle was the holy roman emperor and it's not a great idea to anger who was the most powerful man in the world at the time when he was busy trying to when he was busy trying to pick a war with um france at the time so, where am I? I can increase the speed a bit further. So we'll do that now. Do, do, do. Come on. So I think it tries to, um, it tries to balance the, it tries to balance your, um, uh the time of year it knows um it tells me that i'm traveling at this time of year so that's the way down to new haven and seaford down that one i'm not going there so this is now i've increased again my speed so p4 power 4 is my is the is the most energy i can give to the traction sometimes it's a bit too much to be honest it's like a fourth gear <laughs> So I'm on the third gear, rolling downhill. So I'll just let it cruise in a sec. That's it. And now we're off on the brake. And we'll go outside and have a look. That's cows and trees and, and everything here. Amazing. Over there somewhere is a chalk man on the side of a cliff, or, or so on the side of a hill. I think it's just there and isn't he's, he's called the long man of Wilmington and you can climb up there and it's one of the oldest chalk drawings in the country um, you know, sort of monolithic kind of times um, this is all very boggy around here I can't remember the River Lou I think <laughs> um, and the area is famous for sheep farming people have been sheep farming in the area since before Roman times um, the, all the ground is chalky based just like you see on the white cliffs of Dover and um, it's a uh, it is a, 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 a I mean you take it for granted really when you live around here and I'm not from this area but um, it's a it is a beautiful place to live um, it, yeah very beautiful uh, I feel very lucky so I think this is Glind um, Glind is where they do outdoor music the Glind is it Glyndebourne? Um, I think it's called Glyndebourne. It's like an operatic uh, location. Um, they do outdoor music festivals. I do remember my mum going when I was younger. She went there a couple of times. Um, tried to culture, tried to introduce my dad to some culture. He wasn't having it. Uh, <laughs> and um, although they did used to dress up in bowler hats and uh, sorry, straw hats and things. Uh, this area has got a lot of linseed uh, farming, um, which alternates with lavender. So I think this is this stuff here is trying to recreate linseed. It's not yellow enough for it, although it's a long time of year. But anyway, so we've got ten miles to let's see what happens here. Ten miles to Brighton, uh, to Eastbourne rather. Um, the I can't remember what they were called, but the um, not William Morris. What was the name of her? Oh, Virginia Wolf. Um, her and her friends lived in a 
I lived in a house nearby um, along a road that runs here somewhere and you can go and visit that house <coughs> it was very uh, very avant-garde I think there were naked murals about and things like that but it is open to the public and it is very interesting uh, as I said about Lewis one of Henry VIII's wives uh, her name is Anne of Cleves um, she survived being killed because um, she became the king's sister <laughs> the story <laughs> The story goes, uh, she, they showed in those days to know what your future wife would look like, they um, used to show drawings, and of course the drawings were very favourable. And so he saw a drawing of her and thought, wow, she's a bit of a stunner. You know, <laughs> I'll marry her. Yeah? And she's related to, you know, the Holy Roman Emperor, Emperor. Brilliant. Actually, on the wedding day, he told the. Uh, he told his minister, he told one of his ministers, that she was possibly the ugliest woman he'd ever seen in his life. Poor woman. They were married for about eight months and he managed to get the marriage nulled and void, but he actually did like her. He had a soft spot for her. And he got her the title of the king's sister. So, so she in a kind of weird thing Anne of Cleves was technically adopted as the king's sister and there is quite a few documents whereby um, it's said that she sat down to dinner with uh, other wives um, after Henry had married them and they all got on quite cordially um, <laughs> just, uh, she was said to have been a friend to Anne Boleyn I don't know whether that's true or not but she was given land and she was given title she never went back to Germany uh, where, where she was originally from um, she did learn to speak uh, some rudimentary English and she lived out her days in Lewis of all places I don't know why but, um, under the care of the De Warren family so uh, who owned the castle originally um, and I just find the whole thing quite odd that she became she survived by becoming the king's sister and Henry VIII had all the rest of them divorced the heads chopped off <laughs> exile accused of adultery but this one her 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 punishment was to be <laughs> called the king's sister I just <laughs> I suppose you couldn't get away with saying uh, you know saying she was uh, adulterous or whatever because um even if it were proved to be true she was related she was a some sort of relation to the holy roman emperor and at the time that was def definite death sentence well i've just gone over my speed limit which is bad but then it's put me back up so i went through some points at too fast to speed naughty me so i'm just going to crank up the power again it's a little bit steep here right this is beautiful land it, and it looks, it does, I, I, I can't tell you enough. This is actually a really good representation of what this area looks like. The rolling hills, the trees. It's, I've travelled on this route. I used to work at a hospital in Eastbourne and I've travelled on this route a multitude of times. I've looked out of the windows, listening to music or reading a book or whatever or stuck in snow on a train at Lewis once and didn't go anywhere for four hours I've travelled on this route and I can honestly say it looks like this it really really does um, so I can only think that the other DLCs I can only assume that the others faithfully represent what, what is being shown here and at the door Sorry about that. Amazon at the window again. If you know me, that's a frequent occurrence. <coughs> so, we are, what are we now? We're at 90 miles an hour on a downward slope. Let's hit the, no, not the, ah, oh, I'm going too fast. Quick. Right, just hit the brakes a bit. Go under the speed limit. Coast again. You can see what's coming. There's where we're going from. Very nice. There, it runs along the road in places. Very interesting. Very interesting. Back into the cab. Oh, I don't mind that open. So let's. Let's 
on the other side, so let's keep them all closed. So this is Holgate, I believe, uh, which is the stop before Hamden Park. We're going to have, probably have to slow down to very soon, actually. Uh, I'm going to be going too fast. Oh, too fast around this corner, could derail, need to slow down quicker, going to get in trouble. That was naughty. That was naughty. That that corner can't handle that speed. Uh, I failed before there, so that was lucky. That that I didn't do that because I started again. Now I can speed up again. It's just that corner, that bend. Don't know why that bends there. Very annoying. Everywhere else is pretty straight or graduated except that bend. Um, must be a housing or something. I had to go round it. Come on, speed up. So this bit here is basically almost a straight run, I think, down into um, down into Eastbourne itself. I don't know if this train goes beyond that. Uh, it might go up to Hastings. I've not done that in game yet, so I don't know what to expect. Next one is 55 miles an hour and 2.2 miles. So I'm just going to whack it up to uh, 69. There we go. I'm on a level. So just a little bit, quite the way. So this area is called Hampden Park. My my wife's grandparents lived here. They moved from London back in the 50s, I think, when this place had just been built. And they moved in here and they had her mum uh, at Eastbourne Hospital. And this is where she grew up. This is, this is her neck of the woods. It's quite interesting. Yeah, it's called Hampden Park. Like, like the Scottish Sports Stadium. Also, in one of the buildings off to the left are where the passports are put together. It's supposed to be a secret, but it's an open one. Um, it's one of the contractors that looks after, you know, when you apply for your passport and they put it together and stuff. It's done in one of those buildings over there. <laughs> so, it, the ridiculous thing is, is that if people pretend they don't know what's going on in the building, but the amount of security that's at the building, I've seen armed guards there before, so it's just like, okay, <laughs> well, nothing going, nothing doing here, <laughs> yeah right, so, probably just broke the official secrets out, but not about it. <laughs> I didn't know I'd broken it and I haven't signed it, so, right. So, we, that over there on the right, I think we might have just passed it, yeah, back there on the right. What is it here? Might be here. In one of these areas, uh, on the right here, is uh, Eastbourne General District Hospital. I think it's just, oh, we're not going to be able to see it, too many trees, it's just not real life. Anyway, we're coming into Eastbourne now, we're nearly there. Uh, I'm running late. I don't know if you can see that in the top left hand corner. It took to me at 1631 and it's now 1631 and 16 seconds. And I broke the speed limit in several places. So how on earth I was supposed to get there on time? The only thing I can think of is that you're supposed to be better at timing uh, your your uh, kind of slowing down so to speak so now I am I'm just gonna, I'm gonna switch to the cab now I find it easier to park when I'm in the cab so what are we on here I might have to walk to the other end of the train for this one because it's a one one way in one way out uh, kind of platform deal so yeah, look, here's the thing. Just gonna slow down to 10, 15 maybe. So there's actually a, a buffer 
at the end here. So I fail the mission if I touch the buffer. But I also get really low marks the less green the stop area I stop in is. I think I'm letting anyone here. Letting anyone on here. So we grind to a halt. And we should just about stop perfectly here. That was an enjoyable run. Thank you for ensuring it remained fault free. My pleasure. What happens now? Do I have to open the door? It doesn't say anything, does it? I'll open the door anyway. There we go. They can all get out. I have no idea what happens next now. There's a few people getting on. I c if I'm going to drive the train out, I have to go walk to the other end. So I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to be doing now. It normally tells you. That's it for now. Another driver will be operating the train for the next leg tastings. Disembark to complete your duty. So, disembarking entails me putting on the brake, turning that to off, and turning that off. Set the brake to power three. Okay. That's it. Open the door. Direction switches off. Turn the key off. Set the power brake to three. Oh, it's on two. My bad. Climb down. Ah. There we go. Where do I have to go now? Oh yeah, somewhere over here. So I should have had a picture up of uh, Eastbourne Station as well. Because it looks just like this. There is a co coffee kiosk in the middle. And uh, there are taxis parked there. And there's like a kind of place. There's another way to get in here. I don't know how far it lets me walk actually. Can I actually get out to the car park? Or do I hit a wall somewhere? There it is. I can't go beyond this. Yeah, so there is a ticket machine here. Uh, otherwise you'd better sneak in from the car park. And they, could, they wouldn't let you do that. And I don't know how far I can... Can I walk out of here? No. So I'm barred from walking out into the concourse. But that's okay. It looks great. So there I am. It gives me my um, time. So uh, Lewis Platform. Uh, I didn't have a due date there. So I was quite lucky. I arrived at 16.16. And uh, I was due there. So I was one minute late. Um, 7.18 yard stop accuracy is actually really good. Um, anything under t I find anything under 10 yards is very good. As I said before, I've been playing already. Look, I'm level eight here. I'm level seven on here. Um, it's only because I've had a look around uh, other platforms, other lines. Um, each train has its own training. But one of the things I really like is that um, the red line here is your speed uh, is the supposed speed of what what you know your ideal you know speed limit what you should have been doing the whole way round to achieve the times that they that they demand and the green is my actual tachograph so you know, I'm not too bad. I don't think I'll ever be as clockwork as a straight line because inertia would stop that from happening. So you're never ever going to get straight line drops to speed and stuff without triggering the derailing. You can see where I messed up with some of my speeds. There, there, and there. I was borderline there but otherwise okay that's interesting that I chopped and changed there a few times and it 
a few times there as well and when really I should have just been doing one one continuous thing like here for example I I was going a lot slower than I should have been I should have been up around the 80 mark and I wasn't I was down by the 60s 70s so all in all I think it's a really really quite a good game I've, like I said before I've never played a, a sim game before and I, I really did enjoy this so so this one is uh, or to Brighton via Eastbourne I'm not going to do that today I am going to wish I'm going to bade you all a good day and I'm going to upload this sometime. It's now the 7th. I'm going to upload this sometime this evening or tomorrow morning, depending how quickly I can stop it from looking like a, a six-year-old edited it. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate uh, you watching. And uh, please don't forget to like uh, the video. Thanks a lot. Bye.